So now we're going to construct a box and whisker plot to display the scores on a recent map test. The data are blah, 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 blah. All right, so the first thing you have to do when you get all this data and you're doing a box and whisker plot is you actually need to put them in order from smallest to greatest. So I'm going to do that. So for example, for this 100, I know that just by glancing at it, 100 is a pretty big number. So I'm going to place that here. And then let's see. Can you guys find like the smallest number? 68, OK. I'm going to put that up over here. I think I could fit all the numbers in between that. Perhaps. I'll make it like two rows. OK. And then just try to put them in order from smallest to biggest. So that's what I'm going to do here. So 68, is there a 69? Yes, there is. And then is there a 70? Nope, 71. Yeah, just put it in order, and then we'll see if we agree. All right, I'm still ordering it. Are you guys ordering it still? Okay, so I fit it all in two rows. Oh, I missed a 96. There we go. Okay. Did you guys get this too? So the five number summary is going to be the minimum, the, quart the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and the maximum. Let's start off with the basic stuff, so like the minimum, 68. And the maximum is 100. So if you don't remember mean, median, and mode, that's where you literally find like, or at least for the median, it's where you find the middle number. So literally crossing off numbers one by one until you get to the middle number. So I'm going to cross off, well, I'm going to underline it instead of crossing off, but I'm going to Go one by one and cross off the biggest number and the smallest number. And so we're kind of like inching towards the middle. Then I'm going to cross off the next smallest number and the next biggest number. Then I'm going to cross off the next smallest number and the next biggest number. So no, notice right now I've crossed off three of the edges. We're trying to get to the middle. Now we're crossing off the next edge pieces. Cross off the next edge pieces. I'm just underlining it instead of crossing it off so we can see it. It's a little less messy. Keep crossing off those edge pieces.
Okay, and so now, as you can see, I've crossed off like all the edge pieces and we're left with two numbers in the middle. So when you're left with two numbers in the middle, the way you calculate your median is you add those two numbers and then you divide by two. So I'm gonna write that over here, 89 plus 89 divided by two. And if you were to just um, add them together and divide by two, you would still get 89 just because they're the same number. But sometimes they're different numbers. So the process to get the median when there's two numbers in the middle is add it together, divide by two. If there's just one number in the middle, then you're lucky you found your median. Does that sound familiar from like last year? Yeah, okay, thank goodness. If it doesn't, it's okay. We're learning it again if it, as if it was new. So essentially the middle would be this line that I'm drawing here. It's the middle of these two numbers, that's the middle. So now that I've drawn my middle line, that means I've sectioned off my data into two halves. So that, you know, there's a smaller half and there's a bigger half. We're gonna do this crossing out process again with the smaller half and that's how you're gonna get your quartile one. So it's literally finding the median of the smaller half of data. That is your quartile one. So I'm gonna cross off the smallest number and the biggest number in that half. I'm gonna cross off the next edge pieces in that first half. Then I'm crossing off the next edge pieces in that first half. And again. So now I've crossed off four edge pieces in that first half. We're just gonna keep going. Cross off again. All right, and so once again, we are left with two numbers. And so what do you do when you have two numbers? You add it together, divide by two. So I'm gonna just write it out. 82 plus 82 divided by two. And then you get 82. Sometimes they'll be different. But since 82 and 82 are the same number, when you add it together, divide by two, you're just gonna get the same number again. Sometimes it'll be different numbers, but this time it wasn't. So we found the middle of the first half and that is the Q1, which stands for first quartile, but Q for quartile, one for first. So Q1 is the first quartile, which is the half or the median of the first half. I can't talk, the median of the first half. Okay, and then so for the third quartile, that Q3, it's the same process for the second half. So let's do that, cross off the edge pieces. Again, edge pieces, keep getting rid of them, edge pieces. All right, and once again, we are left with two numbers in the middle, so we're just gonna add them together, divide by two, and since they are the same number, you're gonna get 96 again for your Q3, which stands for a third quartile, which is really just the median of your second half of data. So these are your five numbers for the five number summary. Um, and if you're ever wondering why we skip the Q2, because there's Q1 and there's Q3, technically your median is Q2. Okay, so the Q is quartile, which stands for like one fourth, Think of quarter as being one fourth of a dollar because four quarters equals a dollar. So this is the first 25% of the data is between your minimum and your Q1. The second quarter of your data is between here. The third quarter of your data is between here and the fourth quarter of your data is between here. Okay, so with this five number summary, I'm going to make a box and whisker plot. So like above the 68, which is right here, I'm gonna draw a vertical line. Above the 100, which is your maximum, I'm gonna draw a vertical line. And then above the Q1, which is 82, which is right here, put a vertical line. Above the 89, which is your median, I'm gonna put a vertical line, <laughs> lots of vertical lines here. Um, above the 96, which is your Q3, I'm gonna put a vertical line. Okay, so I just put vertical lines on all of our five number summary. And then after that, the middle three lines, I want you to make it into a box. So the middle three lines, make that a box. That's the box part of your box and whisker plot. And then the whiskers is from your box, go to your minimum and maximum. So those are your whiskers. That's why it's called a box and whisker plot. So there's your box in the middle and then there's whiskers on the side. And so that's what this looks like. 
right. So now we're going to describe the distribution of the data. So most of the data is like between these chunks. So it's kind of more to the right side because um, there's like this long tail of a whisker to the left. Every little section here has the same amount of data points. So like this section has the same amount of data points as here, which has the same amount of data points as here and has the same amount of data points that are here. So the fact that this whisker, this one on the right side, is the shortest whisker, that means there's so there's like a high pile of numbers in that section. So between 96 and 100, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six numbers in there. So they're very like condensed. Over here, those six numbers are spread out because in each of these sections, it's gonna be six numbers. These are so spread out and these are like all piled on top of each other. So actually most of the data is on the right side. Okay, so I'm gonna write that out, not in yellow though. I'm not writing that in yellow. Most of data is on the right. I'm gonna skip the word the because I don't have space and this is not English class. So most of the data is on the right. And so if most of the data is on the right, that means this is going to be skewed to the left, the other side. So I'm going to write that skewed left. And so another way to look at what is skewing it is that there's this really long tail over here. And so that tail is what's skewing your mean to the left side. Okay, so this first question says, what is the range of scores for the middle 50% of the test? So each of these little like sections has 25% of your data because they're all equal and they're all one fourth of your data because there's four little sections. So if you want the middle 50%, that's the box. So this is 25%, this is 25%, and then this is 50%. So what is the range for the middle 50% of the test? Well, it starts at the 82, right over here at your 82. Let's see if I can write it, 82 to this box ends at 96. So that says 82 to 96. Sorry, my handwriting's messy. 82 to 96. Okay. And then question B says, how many of the test scores are exactly 84? So in the dot plot, we would just count the number of dots that were on top of the bin of 84. However, here, 84 is like that little section. Um, all we know is that 84 exists in that, like in between the first quartile and the median, but we will have no clue how many of the test scores are exactly 84 just by looking at the graph. Sure, you can look at the data points here and count 84 twice. So it has a frequency of two. But if I did not give you the data point numbers and you were just looking at the graph, you would have to just say IDK. Like, I don't know, you can't tell. So when you're looking at a box and whisker plot, you cannot tell how many test scores are exactly a certain number. You will not be able to tell because it just gives you ranges. Okay, so each of these ways of displaying data, they have pros and cons. Like this one's kind of more of a summary versus the dot plot gives you every single data point as a visual. So when you have the dot plot, you have stacks of dots. You can count how many test scores are exactly 84. But this one's a summary. It tells you summarized numbers. You literally cannot tell how many scores are exactly 84. Okay, any questions about that? So question C, even though I'm not scrolled to it over here, I know you guys can see it on your screen or your paper. Question C says, how many students scored at least a 45? Wait, sorry, at least an 89. My bad, I was looking at the wrong one. Oh, I'm still looking at the wrong one. Give me a second. At least, wait, what percent of the students scored a 96 or better? There we go, <laughs> 96 or better. So that's saying right here, I should do it in a different color. 96 is right here. 
or better, so it's this section. So they want to know how many students are exactly in this section. And luckily for us, 96 was your third quartile. And so since they're talking about the section from your third quartile to your maximum, we will know that this is 25%. I'm just gonna write it over here because we know every single section is 25%. It's 25% here, it's 25% here, in this section, it's 25% in this section. So we're just talking about the last section is also 25%. So for part C, when it said, what percent of the students scored a 96 or better, that's just the last little section. So it's 25%. Any questions about that? Okay, part D says, what was the lowest score? So lowest score is the minimum. And then luckily for us, the minimum is part of the five number summary. So like literally what is that number? It's 68. So the lowest score was 68, which was your minimum because that is part of your five number summary. And the five number summary are the five numbers that you use to calculate or to create your box and whisker plot. So the last one, which was, what was the lowest score? 68. Okay, any questions about this one? All right, so we're gonna construct another box and whisker plot. So your first task is to order all of this from smallest to biggest. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, let me write this out. I'll do it in blue. So smallest to biggest. Okay, so I think that's my smallest to biggest. It kind of sloped downwards at the end, but that's okay. <laughs> so once you've ordered it from smallest to biggest, then you can start calculating your five number summary. So starting with the most basic one, we have our minimum and your maximum. All right, minimum and maximum placed down. Then we can do our median. The median is the next one. So if you remember, you can try it on your own papers, of course. Uh, median is just cross out the edges until you get to exact middle. So that's what I'm gonna do, except I'm gonna underline because a little bit neater than crossing it out. So you're crossing off the edge numbers. All right, and this time I only got one number in the middle which is great because then I don't have to add and divide by two. One last step. So did you also get the same thing? Hopefully. Just cross off everything on the edges until you get one in the middle and then that's your median. All right. So once you get one number as a median, your first quartile, you can calculate it by, let's use purple. You're not going to use your median. You're going to start here. Okay, so your first quartile starts before the median because your median separates the two halves. So that first half is before the median. Now, with that first half, you can calculate your first quartile by crossing out the edges. So cross, 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 cross. All right, and then I got two numbers in the middle. 
So then I'm just going to take those two numbers, add it together, divide by two. Since they are the same number, we get 42 again. So your first quartile is 42. Let's do your third quartile, same process. Cross, 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 cross. Keep going. And we got, oh, right, 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 hold on. I should not have used the median. Your first, your third quartile, you're gonna use this half. So you're gonna go cross, 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 cross. And then you get two numbers. Add them together. Divide by two. And you get your third quartile. So when you have one median, like we had here, one number for your median, you don't want to include it when you're have when you're calculating your first and third quartile. Okay, so let me give you guys a chance to continue that. All right, so from here, we're gonna draw our box and whisker plot. Remember, just a vertical line on top of everything. So 38, 42, 47, 49, 50. So remember, each of these sections has the same amount of data points in between them. All right, make a box out of your middle three. That is a very ugly box, but it's okay. And then make whiskers on the end. So here's my box and whisker plot. Once again, you can see that stuff is much more condensed over on this section, like it's more squished together, versus on this section, very spread apart. So since it's more squished together on the right side, like those sections are narrower, if you imagine a dot plot, you can imagine higher dots stacked on that side, which means most of your data is to the right. So most, uh, Maybe I should just use the word more. More data on the right. That's a little bit easier to write. <laughs> more data on the right. And so more data is on the right. This is skewed to the left. Because the few numbers that are over here on this left side, those very few numbers, but they exist, since they exist, they're going to skew that mean to the left. So I know I keep saying the mean. If you don't remember what the mean is, mean is just like where you add everything up and divide by the total number of numbers. All right, so more data is on the right. So now it's skewed left. OK, so now we're going to use this box and whisker plot to answer each question. What is the range of scores for the middle 50% uh, of the test? So the middle 50% of the test is literally this box. So what is the range of the middle 50%? Well, it starts at the 42. And then it ends at the 49. So it starts at 42, ends at 49. Okay. Part B says, how many of the test scores are exactly 42? Can we tell exact stuff from this? Yes, no. No. So you can just write, I don't know. And you'd be right for saying, I don't know, because you literally cannot tell. You cannot tell exact data points from a box and whisker plot. Just because there's a line here doesn't mean that you know there's exactly one number there. Could it be one number? It could be two numbers. It could be three numbers. It could be zero numbers. You just don't know. All right. So IDK is the correct answer for that. Okay. What percent of students scored a 47 or better? So 47 or better would be from here all the way to here. So remember, each of these are 25%, right? This is 25%. This is also 25%. So if we want the percent of students who scored a 47 or better, that includes two sections. Each of those sections is 25. So 25 plus 25 is 50. Yes, so this is 50% of students scored a 47 or better, which is great. Out of a test on uh, a test that's out of 50, that's a great score. 
Okay, and then what is the lowest score? So the lowest score is 38, the minimum. Okay, 38. It's your minimum score. So 38 is the lowest score here. All right, any questions? But now we're going to construct a histogram to display the scores on a recent math test. Data, blah, 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 blah. We have a frequency table, and then we have this, which looks kind of like a bar graph, like the setup of a bar graph, but you'll see how it works. All right, so here's a bin range. The bin is from 60 all the way to 70. And we're going to see how many scores are included from 60 until, I guess, technically 69.9. .9. You don't want to include the 70. Okay, so I'm actually going to cross it off. I know it's a 60 to 70, just keep it as 60 to 70. But remember, if you see a score that's 70, you're going to put it in this bin. So I'm going to do the same thing here and here. So if you see a 70, it's going to go in this one. If you see an 80, it's going to go in this one, even though 80 appears in both of these bin ranges. OK, so you just want to make sure to tally it correctly. This one can include the hundreds. OK, OK, so we're going to put tally marks. So the data points 100 over here. I'm going to put a tally mark of 1 over here. 82. That's between 80 and 90. So I'm going to put a tally mark over here. 98. That's between here. 96. 87. 96. 91. 89. Okay, so once you get your tally marks, do they match up? Just double check with me so that we know. Okay, so over here in the bin of 60 until 70, there's two, so I'm just gonna write the number two here. So between 60 and 70, I'm gonna shade it upwards until I've shaded in these first two boxes. So this over here tells you the frequency. All these numbers tell you the frequency, and over here on the bottom, those tell you the test scores. I'm just going to say scores. So between 60 and 70, there was a frequency of 2. So in the bin of 60 to 70, there was a frequency of 2. From 70 to 80, there was 3. So I'm going to shade it up until I reach the height of 3. So it kind of looks like a bar chart, right? And then from 80 until 90, there's 5, 10, 11. I'm going to shade it all the way up to there. I'm sure yours looks a lot better than mine. Oops. So this one has a frequency of 11 because you can see it just goes up until the 11 mark. All right, and the last one has 8. So we should go up there. So it kind of looks just like a dot plot, in my opinion, except that it's bars this time. And the bottom part is not exact numbers, it's a range. So your graph should eventually look just like this. And then when we're describing the distribution of the data, it's a lot like looking at the distribution of a dot plot. It's higher on the right side, so more data on the right. which means it's skewed left. Because if there's more data on the right, it's skewed to the left. I know that sounds weird, but remember the smaller numbers that are on the left side are pulling the mean down. So it's skewing the uh, mean to the left. So that's why it's called skewed left. All right.
Any questions up until here about constructing the actual histogram? So how many test scores are represented by the histogram? You can actually look at the frequency. So this first bin has a frequency of two. So I'm gonna write two plus this second bin has a frequency of three. And then this third bin has a frequency of 11. Fourth bin has a frequency of eight. So if you add up all the frequencies, it's essentially the same as counting the dots. So two plus three plus 11 plus eight, that would be five plus 19, which gives us 24. So 24 test scores are represented by the histogram. All right, so then for part B, it says how many students had a test score of less than 70? So remember 70 is right over here. You want less than it, you just count those and you can see that it has a frequency of two. So I'll just say two. How many students had a test score less than 70? You count the ones, well, you don't really count it. You just look at the frequency and then you have it all there. Then for part C, how many students have a test score of at least 70? So at least 70 means you're gonna go from here, this is the 70 mark, you're gonna add up the frequencies of these. So that would be, well, I'll write it over here. Three for this one, plus 11 for this one, plus eight for this one. So that would be 14 plus eight, which would be 22. So for part C, your answer is 22. I know you can't see the question here on my screen just because I couldn't scroll low enough. It just doesn't fit. But part C, 22, 22 scores of at least 70. And for part D, how many test scores are exactly 91? Well, I know 91 is like somewhere in here. But once again, this is like a summary. You cannot tell how many are exactly 91. I only know that there are eight scores somewhere between uh, 90 and 100. But I don't know if any of them were 91 or if there were like all of those eight scores are 91. I just don't know. So for part D, when you're asking for exactly 91, you have to say, I don't know. This is part D. You have to say you don't know because this is a summary. You cannot tell just by looking at the graph how many scores were exactly 91. You just can't tell. Okay, any questions? All right, clear all drawings. Let's go to the last one and then let's see if I can scroll properly. So we're going to not construct a box and whisker plot. That is a typo. Okay, that's a typo. We already did a box and whisker plot. We're going to do a histogram for this one as well. Okay, so histogram. Uh, histogram. And we're going to do this one quickly because we have six minutes left in class. So the date is 38, blah, blah, blah. We're going to put tally marks. So I'm just going to tally it up really quickly. So this is the 38. This is the 41. 42, 47, 50, 49, 47, 47, oops, 42, 43, 47, 46, 49, 50, and we have a 45. Remember that the 45 goes here. I'm just going to point over here and cross out that so you know that the 45 goes in that last one all right so 30 to the 35 it has a frequency of one 35 to 40 has literally nothing that's okay 40 to 45 has four 45 to 50 has 10 So here is your histogram. As you can see, more data is on the right because it's taller. Which means it's skewed to the left. We're going to use this histogram to answer questions. So the first question says, how many test scores are represented by the histogram? All you got to do is count the frequency for each of them. So this one has a one. 
this one has a four, this one has a 10. You add it all, you get 15. 15 test scores are represented by the histogram. So you just add up all the frequencies. For part B, it says how many tests or how many students had a test score of less than 45? No, less than 35. 35 is right over here. So you just want to count this one guy. One. How many students had a test score of at least 45? So then you want to count. Here's 45. You want to count this one, which is a frequency of 10. You don't really have to count it. You literally just look this 10. So for part C, I'll write to you over here. You get 10 students having a test score of at least 45. And for part D, how many of the test scores are exactly 44? Can you tell exact numbers from this thing? Nope. So for D, you have to say, I don't know, because you literally cannot tell. You would be wrong if you pretended to know, okay? Any questions on this?